Hello and welcome to HISD Community Connections. I'm your host, Colleen Allen, General Manager of Strategic Partnerships. At HISD, we're determined to ensure that all our students graduate prepared for college or the career of their choice. But we can't do it alone. Our community and business partners are an integral part of Team HISD. During today's show, you'll learn more about several of the district's dedicated partners and hear firsthand why they are committed to the students of HISD. We start today with the C-STEM Challenge. Piloted in 2002 as an after-school program with only 20 students, the C-STEM Challenge has become an international success growing to impact over 25,000 students in over 50 schools from five states and the Dominican Republic. Joining me to talk more about the challenge is founder and CEO, Dr. Reagan Flowers, Jackson Middle School teacher, Joseph Alva, and Austin High School student, Christian Gonzalez. Thank you all for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Dr. Flowers, tell us why you started the C-STEM program uh, back in 2002. I'm a former classroom teacher, taught at Jack Yates High School. I wrote a grant to build a robot through FIRST Robotics. Had no idea what I was getting myself into. And um, it was an eye-opener as a teacher, a very humbling experience, because through, through that experience, I realized how un unprepared my students were, and I also realized how I was not the phenomenal teacher that I thought I was. <laughs> I had some growing to do. Uh, but I discovered project-based learning, and I, and I discovered an experience that my students were completely dedicated to, wouldn't leave the building, would be really? there seven days a week. And so from that, um, started exploring what is project-based learning, what is this whole thing of STEM, mm -hmm. and um, was very fortunate to add this C, which is communications, because without literacy, without reading and writing, Absolutely. our kids can't perform at math and science, and um, we piloted an HISD at West Briar, and mm -hmm. here we are over a decade now, still at it and still growing and impacting te teaching and learning, um, not just in Houston, but abroad. Right, and I mean, so you were very cutting edge, because I mean, STEM now is just a common uh, terminology yes. that we hear, but I'm sure back then it wasn't, the, oh, the acronym Colleen, wasn't used you as You have <laughs> no idea. Uh, when I first started, I would, um, people wouldn't help me because they thought I was doing stem cell research. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so okay. So <laughs> it was uh, educating <laughs> mm -hmm. um, people what this STEM concept is. And for our organization, we look at STEM a lot different from many. Um, it's an integrated approach to learning. We, mm -hmm. we realize and believe that um, STEM is how we live. It's applying what we know. And that's what we bring to the classrooms. It's not compartmentalizing the science, technology, engineering, and math and using them separate and apart, but it's bringing them together. Up. Well, let's talk about your successful international uh, STEM challenge that you just had. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about the, the, oh. the program and what, what children participated or teens participated yes. in. Yes, it gets better and better every year. <laughs> oh, wow, I you know was to tears this year looking at the amazing work that the kids do. We have uh, seven challenges basically that the kids work on and they can't choose um, to just do one. They have to compete in all. Oh. And it's a feeder pattern model or pipeline, so it's pre-K to 12. Yes. And our schools have to come to us as a team, an elementary, middle, and high school partnering so that the collaboration can happen and partnering vertically and horizontally. We ask that they identify, uh, try six teachers per campus, but it depends on the size of the schools, so that we can touch English, math, science, social studies, technology, and art. And the categories have been, um, over the years, we're not married to them, but that's where we are right <laughs> now. Uh, robotics, green, GIS, mm -hmm creative writing, art with mural and sculpture. Mm -hmm. We also have social media and we threw a quiz bowl in there for them and it's just really exciting and everything is project based and it's all about problem solving, mm -hmm. coming up with solutions to real world problems. Okay, and so how many you know kids participated in this? I know it was an all day type yes. activity, right? Yes, it's an all day competition. Uh, we pretty much, we start around 7.30 in the morning and we wrap up around six o'clock, but it's a culmination of seven to eight months of hard work. Sure. So we start, we kick off around, normally around October, November, mm -hmm. um, and then we work all year. And so it's all about getting to that one day where they're able to compete with their artifacts. Okay. Well, uh, Mr. Alva, tell us about, you know, why you get involved with the STEM challenge and how you um, teach your students to get excited about participating. I love it. Uh, Dr. Flowers was mentioning that uh, she didn't know what she was getting into. And yes, you're right. I had no idea what I was getting into. Um, I was. Uh, I remember in my first year, I was. Uh, we were in the competition final at TSU, and uh, my uh, friend uh, was 
sit next to me and I leaned over and I said, how long have you been doing this? And he said, this is my first year. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe that. The, uh, I, I realized uh, from something that happened at a, one of the high schools, we were uh, working on a challenge and one of the students uh, reached over and, and, and commented, why can't we do this in school? And to me, it's just opening books. And it, to me, it was like an aha moment. Uh, I realized then that uh, we really needed to get the kids involved, not only after school, but during school. Okay. So we at Jackson, what we do is we, uh, we created four courses this year that are called enrichment courses. Okay. Uh, we created the creative writing, we created sculpture, art, and the robotics. And so we hope to incorporate uh, GIS and the green next year. Uh, the kids can choose the courses, uh, but uh, because a lot of kids can't stay after school, then they get a chance to do it during, during, the, during the day with their teachers. Right. And we actually uh, correlated to HSD's TEKS curriculum along with uh, Dr. Flowers' curriculum. Okay. So. Well, I know that congratulations are in order. You are the recipient of the Jane Arsenault Excellence in Education Award. Tell us a little bit about this honor and the criteria for the award. I was totally surprised. <laughs> I did not <laughs> expect it. Thank you, Dr. Flowers. Uh, it's a lot of work. It really is. Uh, uh, in the five years, it, it just takes a lot of uh, commitment. Uh, mm -hmm. We had six different workshops on Saturdays. I was uh, just about every single one, and not only in one area, but every mm -hmm. area. Because I realized as the team leader, I have to be on top of everything that goes on, and I have to be able to inform the kids and the teachers in the event that they, they don't understand something. Uh, that's why I always call Dr. Flowers because I know that she does the same thing, you know, mm -hmm. as as the founder and creator. So uh, yeah, I think uh, that's one of the things is you have to be on top of the challenges. You have to know every single area. Uh, organization, you have to organize the students. Uh, when students can't come, you have to have backups. Okay. Uh, I recommend that there are at least five to six students per challenge, and then you have backup students in the event that one can't come. Something happens. Same thing yeah. with teachers. I know that we, we can't always have, uh, you know, 10 to 15 teachers, but if you have at least six teachers, then you can have a backup person that comes in in the event that they can make it. I myself am backup for every single area, so I have to be on top of everything. Well, hence, that's why you got the award, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's fun. It's yeah. Fun. Well, Christian, you are at the heart of why Dr. Flowers started this program. Tell us about, from the student's perspective, why you chose to get involved and what the challenge was, uh, the experience was for you. I choose to get involved in this program because I'm really excited in technology and science and engineering. So the program covers all of that, you know, in one. Mm -hmm. And so I got involved in all of the competitions and they're pretty exciting. And I started in 10th grade, so oh, okay. I liked it. And we didn't do that well since we didn't get the three schools that we, we were in, you know, mm -hmm. we didn't get connected as much. And that's what it is all about, you know, getting connected. But this year, we won um, GIS mm -hmm. and the robotics, but I don't have my other medal with me right now, so yeah, but anyways, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we won the first place on GIS on, and on robotics because we got connected and mm -hmm. teamwork. Well, congratulations. Yeah. What, what's your favorite category out of the, the various My ones? favorite category was robotics, <laughs> the mural, and all of them, basically, all of them. since I like all of the things that system offers, you know. And yeah. Do you have aspirations to go into um, uh, what kind of field? I want to be a doctor. I want the, to go to the biology field and a scientist also. So probably an engineer. I'm not really sure. I like all of the parts of the science and math. Okay. And so, yeah. Well, what would you, what kind of words of encouragement would you give some of the students coming behind you to, when they think about, should I get involved with C-STEM challenge or not? Or maybe I'm not good enough or? What would you say? You should, because this year I met a person that she said that she liked the way I, I was in the competition, mm -hmm. and now she's offering me a scholarship. And so there's a lot of business people around there that oh. come, and so they give you opportunities if you go and, you know, try your best in the competition. And I encourage them to join. It's pretty good for science and math, and it looks good, right? Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, congratulations. Dr. Flowers, let's just wrap it up, but let's talk about what your plans are for the CSIM challenge moving forward and how can educators who haven't gotten involved get involved in the future? Well, great. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share a bit more. Uh, 
to grow system global, more global, uh, more, more global connections is the goal. Um, I feel that our schools need help um, making those global connections for our children so that they're not just competitive in STEM, but that they can compete globally. And so the more we can grow as an organization to make those international partnerships and create opportunities for our kids to go abroad, to leave not just um, the state and the city, but to go to other countries and experience STEM and just communicating and collaborating with others across the waters um, that's a, a goal for us and so that's what's that's what's next and so we're making these kids very that. competitive on that's a global right. basis yeah um, their future is a lot different than our reality right now yeah. and um, it's it's so bright that we can't even imagine what the possibilities are what it will be but we definitely want them to be um, stem ready and globally prepared to compete in those spaces well thank you for all you do no, dr. flowers thank you. and thank you, thank you mr. So Alva and Christian the best of luck to you. I know you're a junior. You have one more year and mm -hmm. off you go to college. So we wish you the best. I know we'll be hearing very good things about you moving Thank forward you so and representing much. HISD down mm -hmm. the road. Coming up next, getting elementary kids excited about math and science can be a challenge, but not for Education Rainbow Challenge. They're our Spotlight Partner of the Month and we'll talk to them next on Community Connections.